Yo, what's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at again with another New York Giants video. Uh, you guys already know the spiel at this point, I'm very busy, hence lack of content, but also, fortunately, I'm busy at a time where there seems to be not that much, you know, news in the first place but today's video as the title says is something i've wanted to do for a while and in place of me not being able to do another mock draft because of the time constraints and whatnot this was gonna sort of be tied in with you know a mock draft trades i'm looking at possible trades or trade scenarios that could come up on draft day for the new york giants joe shane and brian dayball and using both just what i think is fair in addition to the nfl like draft trade value chart i'm not sure what the official name is but uh, for those of you that don't know about it it's a chart that has all of the picks and all seven rounds listed out with with a point system they're kind of listed with a value next to them that apparently some nfl teams do actually use when it comes to working out trades and whatnot i will put a little caveat to it right now last year uh, when the San Francisco 49ers trade up, I believe it was from 12 all the way to the third overall pick. They gave up three future first rounders. They gave up a lot to move up. And that was certainly way more than what this value chart says they should have given up. If we just look at what the third round, uh, the third overall pick is valued at, it has a 2,200 uh, point next to it. The 12th overall pick alone is around 1,200. So they only just need to add 1,000 more points. And they gave up the 12th overall pick and I think 2022 and 2023's first round picks. A future first round pick alone is worth a thousand. So you could say they overpaid by at least a thousand because I'm pretty sure there were more picks involved to move up. Um, so like I said, I'm, I am going to be using this value chart to make sure I don't go too crazy that, that you know, you know, I keep it a little bit on bias that the Giants don't get too much in return where it seems unfair. But when teams are trading up for quarterbacks, just like San Fran did last year, as you can see, very much they will be willing to overpay a little bit if they feel like he is the guy that could, you know, take their franchise to new heights or if they feel like there's some sort of competition uh, that might be taking that quarterback instead of themselves so that being said let's just get right into it the first team we'll start off with in my opinion which is probably the only trade i do uh, because i just like what we get in return off bat is with the new orleans saints and this will be the saints trading up to the seventh overall pick now some of you may be asking why not the fifth uh because in this scenario i guess you could say that uh carolina took kenny pickett and the saints want malik willis and he's still on the board at seven you know detroit lions end up not taking him they went with whoever they saw was the best available player whether uh it was you know cave on thibodeau or you know they want to improve their old line even more even though they have a pretty good old line so i think it probably would be cave on thibodeau at two right there to detroit so in this scenario where the panthers take picket uh the saints are afraid of their division rivals the falcons possibly having a chance to take malik willis so they call up the giants who are sitting at pick seven Pick seven right now is worth 1,500 points. The Saints recently made a trade, in my opinion, uh, with their to get two first rounders in this year's draft, which I think could be a sign that they're looking to use that as ammo to trade up. They have the 16th and 19th pick. Pick 16 is value at 1,000, 19 at 1875. Those two alone would theoretically be enough to trade up uh, to the seventh overall pick, right? Um, and by the draft chart. Now, if I'm the Giants, and I would even think in real life uh, for a team to trade up, they'd have to throw in something else. They'd have to throw in like a mid-round pick this year or a future mid-round pick. And that's exactly what I would do in this situation. Even though 16 and 17 add up to more than enough points, I'm going to say they give the Giants a future third, which is worth 190. So it's not too much more. And they trade back. And it, at this position where the Giants now have three first-round picks in total, they, could, they still get whoever they... You know they viewed as the best player available at five that's going to be a you know hopefully a superstar player they could get potentially a devin lloyd at 16 potentially a jermaine johnson around there at 16. even jermaine johnson might be available at 19 along with tyler lindebaum everybody's favorite center there's many many ways to go with 16 and 19 and then you still get a future third whether it's next year or you know maybe they kicked it down the line to 2024 or something uh even though i'm looking at this and i say maybe i want a little bit more maybe i'm too greedy but according to the draft chart, even then, the Saints are overpaying. But I would love that trade. 
another one that the Giants could definitely look at if it happens, um, if this team calls up, was the team I just mentioned, the Atlanta Falcons. And now the Atlanta Falcons are going to try and jump ahead another division rival in the Carolina Panthers, going from pick eight to pick five. Now, pick eight is worth 1,400 points. Pick five is worth 1,700 points. They theoretically, right, according to this draft chart, they only need to add in a pick that's around 300 point value, and that's a second round pick. Now, I'm looking at this, and if I'm the Giants, once again, yes, I am trying to squeeze as much out as I can. Obviously, they'll be giving me the first, their first round pick. They also hold, hold pick 43, which is worth 470 points. So they're already meet the threshold, right? They're already meet what they need to meet to trade up. Yeah, I'm still asking for a future. <laughs> Maybe it would be a future fourth um, or something. I would still see if I could get a future third. And a future third, once again, is worth 190. A future fourth is worth 70. There is a big drop off. But I would do pick eight, pick 43. And I would say, you know, if the Falcons are truly desperate, a future third round pick as well. Maybe that's too much. More realistically, it would be a future fourth round pick, which is just 70 more points. And then the Giants, they move back to 8th overall. They have back-to-back -back picks in 7 and 8. Uh, they take whoever they take there. Now we have two second-round picks, which is extremely valuable. And we have a future fourth as well. You know, just thinking about players that will be available around 7 and 8. You got Charles Cross. You got basically your choice of edge rushers after Cave On. So those are guys like uh, Carl Loftus, Johnson. I was about to say Ojabo, but he just popped back in my head that he is injured. But speaking of Ojabo, because we do have two second round picks now, I would definitely in this situation, if he's available at um 36, if I'm the Giants, I'm taking a chance on David Ojabo. I've said it a couple times in the streams, but if we're in a situation where we have two second round picks, I don't care that he tore his Achilles. I'm drafting him and I'm, you know, getting him the best medical help and attention he needs and just letting him heal up, letting him once he heals up gets a good thing with the coaching staff and then hit the field and we could still get somebody else in that second round we could still get a you know interior lineman i've seen Kenyon green dropping which is a, a tragedy but we could still get a good interior lineman we could still get even a linebacker christian harris out of alabama is probably going to be there leo chanel who a lot of giants fans love is probably going to be there chad muma who i'm a big fan of is probably going to be there you could get you know if you want to take a wide receiver high if you want to take a tight end high if you want to take your running back there you probably get the best available running back in the draft you know whether you view that as kenneth walker or somebody else there's a lot of places you could go with that second second round pick and then finally there's i guess the final trade scenario i could see popping up i could see you know maybe a team trading up would be the pittsburgh steelers and i will get it out right now this pittsburgh steelers trade i'm about to make they're jumping all the way from 20 to 5 is going to be a massive overpay because this is an even bigger jump than from 12 to 3 and if pittsburgh is really trading up from 20 to 5 then i listen there's no doubt in my mind and there should be no doubt in any nfl uh fans mind that they believe whatever quarterback they're taking at five whether it's the hometown kid in uh kenny pickett or whether it's malik willis the guy with the high ceiling they certainly believe he is the future because that is a 15 pick jump that's larger than what the Giants traded down last year from 11 to 20 with the Bears. And like I said, once again, larger than the uh, San Fran trade from 12 to 3. So maybe not a lot of people are going to like this. And even I admit it's a massive overpay. Maybe it's not realistic. But they got the 20th pick, which is only valued at 850 points. And their second round pick is uh, pick number 52, which is valued at around 380 points. Their third round pick is pick number 84 which is valued at 170 points, even all those three combined is not worth the fifth overall pick in this situation, man. You, you talk about the actual trade value chart itself, and once again, you also talk about a team that believes they're gunning for their franchise quarterback. They're going to need to add a little bit more. So yeah, I'm going to say Pittsburgh trades their first round pick this year, their second round pick this year, their first round pick next year, and, and that still, that probably gets them to, you know, in the actual point system above where they need to be. But I'm not done yet. Their third round pick next year and a second round pick in 2025. Like I said, massive overpay. But if they believe it, then, then why wouldn't they make it? And we've seen massive overpays before. Now, a realistic, you know, you know, realistic trade would probably be you take out that 2025 pick 
you know, the Giants, we have basically three first round picks in return, technically, right? You the, the pick swap plus the two future firsts, a second this year, and uh, what did I say, a third next year? That's a good haul either way. Now, the, the problem with trading down from 5 to 20 is you're trading down from 5 to 20. Even though you're getting a good amount of, you know, draft value in return, you're missing out on potentially one of the best players in the entire draft, right? You still have that pick 7. But what if you miss out on a guy like, I don't know, like Evan Neal, who somehow dropped to five and you hope he drops to seven and he's not there. Or you, you don't want to end up in a situation where even though I love Kadarius Tony and I'm a big fan of Kadarius Tony, last year the Giants traded out and there were two players on the board that went to their, you know, Pro Bowls immediately uh, and all pro teams as well immediately. And that was Rashawn Slater and Michael Parsons. And I don't want the Giants to end up in a situation like that again. And you risk that by doing such a massive trade down, right? But it's just a couple things to explore, a couple things to keep in mind. Maybe get, you know, the brain, the brain gears turning. But you guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts down below. Which trade do you like? Which one is the most realistic? Which one would you do? Uh, like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.